Quickest way to kill your business with crocodile tears. Sharon Horn Elstrom here, and our idiom today is crocodile tears. What the heck are crocodile tears? What does it what does it even mean? Crocodile tears? And how on earth would that kill and destroy my business? What are you talking about, Sharon? Well, this is one of those idioms or one of those things that's been around for centuries, since 300 AD, ancient Rome, they were using the expression crocodile tears. And about a thousand years later, there was a popular folktale or folklore about a crocodile that would cry and make a ruckus and they'd make these weeping loud sounds in order to attract their prey. And even while they were eating and crunching down on their prey, they would be, you know, weeping these tears and making these sounds. So they had this incredible built-in strategy, which is probably why they're one of the oldest, um, living creatures on the planet to attract, fool their prey, trick their prey into thinking that they needed help or that they needed some rescuing while they crunched away and ate them. Later on, Shakespeare and Bacon and Tennyson all used crocodile tears to mean false sympathy or to mean pretend um, sorrow, to, to be faking it, right? So fake tears or fake grief came to be known as crocodile tears. So what does this have to do with your business? How on earth could your business be using crocodile tears? Well, the quickest way to kill your business is to be dishonest, not be trustworthy, or to not care about the people that you serve or about the people that help you serve the people that you serve, like your employees, your teammates, your vendors. If you don't care about other people and other things, you're not gonna be in business very long. Uh, not not being honest, not being trustworthy, not being sincere, people can see that and smell that a mile away. Um, when you pretend to care, when you pretend to support something for your own reasons, people can see through that. We've been seeing a lot of that this year in 2019, 2020, with COVID-19, and especially in the United States with politics. People are pretending to care about causes and issues and things because they think that they should, because they think it puts a good face on it. When you do that for your business, when you do that for yourself, when you pretend to care about something that you really, really don't genuinely care about, people know, people can sense that. Have you ever uh, gone into a store, you've gone into a, a business establishment, not so much now, but a lot now as well, you can really tell who cares about their customers in terms of the businesses, how they're, how they're cleaning, how they're sanitizing, how they're using protective equipment, how they're changing their systems and processes to ensure the safety of the people that, that still frequent their business. Some businesses are doing it very begrudgingly and they don't really wanna do it, it's just costing them more money and people can sense that. And other businesses are like, we can't do enough to make sure it's safe for you to continue to do business with us. We can't find enough ways please let us know how and what you think we could do in order to continue our relationship. People know that. Um, have you ever been into a store back in the day when we were walking in and out of stores a lot? And even now, when the person that greeted you at the door was so happy to see you, genuinely glad that you were there, and asked you, hey, can I help you find anything? Do you want, you know, do you know where everything is here? And, and they genuinely, they really looked you in the eye, they smiled at you, and they cared about that you were at that business, that you were there looking to get one of your problems solved or your needs met. And then we go into the stores. I think of the Mall of America. You know, there's like 800 stores there. And you walk into some of the stores and the clerk is like, can I help you? In like a deadpan, dead tone voice, she's staring at her phone. You know darn well, the last thing she wants to do is help you find anything. She just wants to keep going and, and playing a game on her phone or having a conversation and a text message or whatever it is, but she couldn't care less about you and whether you come into that store and buy anything or not. We all inherently have the ability to sense whether people care about us, give a crap or not. And guess what? We like to do business with people that really care about us, that really want to help us solve our problems. So if you're showing false interest or false caring or being dishonest or not being trustworthy in any way, shape or form, it comes through in subtle ways and in very overt ways. And that clerk that doesn't care about whether she helps you or not, that, that belief, that behavior generally permeates through the entire organization. Because she's been told that every time somebody comes in the door, she needs to, she's required to ask them if she can help them. And that's all she's taught, that's all she's required. She's not taught to care because the people in the organization probably don't care that much about 
their customers either way. See, that comes through in our culture. And it's up to us as the leaders and the influencers in our own organizations, in our own businesses, to create the culture where we do care about people by first caring about the people that are a part of our organization. So I'd love to know your experience with this. Crocodile Tears, I am not a crier. I consider myself a non-crier, with the exception, of course, of Hallmark movies, some Disney movies, any tearjerker movies, uh, and Lifetime movie channels for women. They, they have got it honed in where they can trip a trigger in me and get me crying like a water fountain no matter what. They just know how to tell the stories that, that actually elicit sincere feelings in me that caused me to cry, which is embarrassing because I consider myself not to be a crier. So if you catch me crying, it's usually because I'm super duper upset about something or something traumatic that I really, really care about has happened in my life. And people know that. I mean, if people see me cry, holy buckets, it doesn't happen very often. But I can probably count on two hands the number of times and the number of things that I've actually cried over. Uh, and, and one of those was uh, an experience of getting fired and I wasn't crying because I was upset about getting fired. I was crying because I was so peed off that uh, I knew that if I didn't cry, I was going to say something that I regretted in the, in the exit meeting with the VP of uh, Human Resources and my Vice President. I, I was definitely not a happy camper in that situation. Anyway, love to know your experience with crocodile tears. Have you ever actually seen a crocodile or heard a crocodile cry? I would be really curious about that. I will admit I've never seen a crocodile except maybe in a zoo but I've never, I've never been exposed to a crocodile in my life and I've never seen one cry. So I'm curious if it really does sound like weeping. I can attest that coyotes sound like children being tortured in the woods. That's something I have experienced and heard, but I've never heard a crocodile cry. So I'd be curious about if anybody's had that experience. Go out, make it an awesome day. I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your business today? Take care, have fun.